Please note that improper setup or maintenance of this part could result in serious injury or death. You'll need a hex wrench to complete this step. Loosen the handlebar binder bolt and center the handlebar to the bike. When present, make sure the brake and shift cables are routed properly around the handlebar so they're taking the smoothest path across the bike with no snags or twists. Retighten the binder bolt until the handlebar is firmly secured. Remove the nuts and washers from the main frame. Join the rear frame and main frame together by sliding the bolts on the main frame into the slots on the rear frame. The bolts furthest from the gears on the main frame should fit into the back slots of the rear frame, while the bolts closest to the gears should fit into the slots on the front of the rear frame. Slide a washer over the end of each bolt and fasten a nut onto it. Repeat these steps for each of the three remaining bolts. Wait to tighten the nuts until after the secondary chain is attached. You'll need a 17 mm open and box end wrench. You may require another person's assistance for this step. Wrap the secondary chain around the inner sprocket and the drive sprocket. Adjust the position of the rear frame until the ends of the secondary chain meet, leaving one chain length's length in space between the ends. Connect the two ends of the chain by inserting the post of a master link through the hole on one end of the secondary chain link. Insert the post of the other master link through the opposite end of the secondary chain, on the opposite side of the hole. Then, pull the chain so that the posts are inserted into the smaller hole of the master chain. Pull the rear frame back so that the secondary chain is taut. Once the chain is taut, tighten the four bolts to secure the rear frame to the main frame. You'll need a 17 mm open and box end wrench to complete this step. Remove the lock nuts from the axle. Locate the drive wheel, which will have a notched opening that matches the notched rear axle. Slide the drive wheel onto the axle, followed by the washer. Fasten the lock nut on the axle and tighten securely. Repeat these steps with the non-drive wheel. To prevent the axle from turning while attaching the non-drive wheel, hold the drive wheel firmly in place while tightening the lock nut. On the non-drive side, check that the wheel spins freely and has no side-to-side -side play. Fasten the plastic cap on over the lock nut. Repeat this step with the non-drive wheel. You'll need a Phillips head screwdriver with a minimum four inch shaft to complete this step. Remove the hardware attached to the rear fenders. Position the fender so the rear reflector is facing away from the bike. Align the slots on the fender tabs with the slots on the rear frame tabs. The tabs on the fender should be on the outside of the tabs on the rear frame. Working from the inside of the wheel, Fasten a screw through the side holes of the fender tab into the rear frame tabs. Rotate the rear wheel until there is adequate space for the Phillips head screwdriver to reach through the spokes to the fender hole. Working from the outside of the wheel, fasten a screw through the center fender hole into the center hole of the rear frame. Be sure that the fender has adequate clearance from the wheels. If necessary, adjust the fender slightly to properly align with the wheels. Repeat these steps for the second fender. You'll need a screwdriver, a box wrench, and a hex wrench to complete this step. With the wheel removed, position the front fender so the fender bracket is behind the fork crown. Align the hole in the bracket with the hole in the fork crown. Place a washer on the screw and insert through the crown and bracket. Place a second washer, then a hex nut on the screw 
and tighten until secure. Seat the front wheel axle completely in the fork dropout slots, making sure the wheel is as centered as possible between the fork legs. Place a clip retaining washer on each side of the axle and secure the hooked ends inside the small holes on the fork dropouts. Insert the end of each fender brace over the clip retaining washers and loosely replace the two axle nuts. Center the wheel and tighten each axle nut gradually and evenly by switching sides until both are secure. If the wheel is not centered, loosen the axle nut on the side with the smaller gap. Shift and hold the wheel on center and re-tighten the nut. You'll need a wrench to complete this step. Release the brake when present and loosen the wheel axle nuts enough for the fork ends to fit. Seat the axle completely in the dropout slots with the washers on the outside. If the washers have hooks or steps, place them inside the small holes on the fork dropouts. Center the wheel and tighten each axle nut gradually and evenly by switching sides until both are secure. If the wheel is not centered, loosen the axle nut on the side with a smaller gap. Shift and hold the wheel on center and re-tighten the nut. Make sure to re-fasten the brake when present. Apply grease to the outside of the seat post. Unlock the quick release lever and insert the seat post far enough into the seat tube that the minimum insertion mark can't be seen. Align the seat with the top tube of the frame and tighten the adjusting nut until the lever, when closed, holds the seat post firmly in position. Adjust the seat height as needed for alignment, rider fit, and comfort. You'll need a 15 millimeter open-ended wrench to complete this step. Pedals are directional and conveniently marked with an L for left and R for right. The R pedal should be matched to the right-hand crank arm on the chain side of the bike and is threaded in a clockwise direction, while the L pedal should be matched to the left side crank arm and is threaded in a counterclockwise direction. Start threading each pedal by hand two to three turns in the correct direction on the appropriate crank arm, then wrench tighten. Fold the basket sides up. Align the rings located on two corners of the basket. Insert the pins on the end of the chain through the rings on the corners of the basket. You'll need a Phillips head screwdriver to complete this step. Remove necessary hardware, which comes attached to the frame. Place the assembled wire basket on the rear frame and align the slots on the basket with the threaded screw holes in the frame. The slots on the wire basket are positioned so the basket can only be attached one way. If the slots do not line up properly, rotate the basket 180 degrees. Insert a washer onto the screw and insert through the basket slots onto the threaded screw hole in the rear frame. Repeat these steps with the remaining washers and screws so that the basket is attached at four points together.